Hello, who are you? I am uh, Roberto Valenti, I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Sitecorp. And what does, your, what does your company do? Well, our company focuses on the analysis of face. So starting from uh, um, camera image or a video file, we're going to be able to use uh, artificial intelligence and computer vision algorithm to understand everything that is going on on your face, so any kind of information that is available there. Information like your age, your gender, your ethnicity, that's long-term information, but also information like about your mood or your facial expression, uh, your, uh, your direction of interest. So we know where you're looking and how you're feeling. How would you describe artificial intelligence? What is it? The opposite of real stupidity, no, <laughs> just a joke. <laughs> so it's um, artificial intelligence is the process of teaching a computer, starting from examples, uh, to make a, a decision, discriminating between all the data, finding a, a, a line that you say like, well, I'm telling you this is this way and this is this other way, find what the difference is, right? So this automatic data processing is what AI actually means, then the purpose of it, of course, is very different because you can do like what we're currently doing is this kind of weak AI, weak artificial intelligence that basically says, here is a task, you got to learn to do this task. And the strong AI would be the one in which you say like, well, you're a general intelligence and you can do all the tasks. And that, of course, still we're still not there and it's going to take some time to get there. Very nice. You already <laughs> you already answered answered the next question I was about to ask, and that was what was the what is the difference between weak and strong AI? But you just describe it or and um, mm, where where is AI being used today? And what do you think where it being used tomorrow or in the future? So today AI is being used to sell you more things, <laughs> mainly. Well, you can also, it's also being used in medical uh, application to actually detect, uh, to do diagnosis. Um, it's used in, in many text retrieval, text info, uh, understanding, also uh, tagging. There are a lot, of, uh, a lot of applications in the visual field, in the text field, in the sound uh, field. So there are really uh, a lot, there is a lot of signal processing going on. Um, what is, what is going to happen in the future, I think that people are going to try to build this strong AI and uh, try to do humanoid robots and all these kind of things. But I don't think that that's really an interesting use case. You know, I, I tell the people, uh, if you want to make something that looks and thinks like a human, just make a baby, <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's make it, <laughs> okay. Uh, and, um, what I think that AI is going to be very useful and should be useful in the future is really to find a way f to serve its purpose and the purpose is dictated by us. So it's really important for to have to spend time really defining what it is that uh, uh, that we need AI for. And you know, if you talk about emotional intelligence, that's really something that should be only attached to uh, humans. Moral decision also just attached to humans. Don't let's not project what humans do to what AI can do or should be doing. But you know, AI can be very good at controlling the humidity and the temperature on this uh, vertical farm of the future, which is going to provide food to the entire city. That is a very good use case of AI. Killing machines, not a very good use case of AI. Indeed. Uh, how do you think uh, AI will affect the, um, uh, let's say, in the works of the people or in the society in the future? Yeah. Depend what kind of jobs uh, you're talking about, but definitely AI is going to replace a lot of jobs. Um, or even something that you would not imagine, but uh, say if now we have an algorithm that is doing the, the security, what's the purpose of security man or what kind how can, can we reduce the workforce of security to just a few men that just make sure that the alarm are, that are sound are actually correct? Right, so we will see a shrinkage of certain kind of jobs uh, and people hope that there will be new kind of jobs, but you know, with technology and automation, you need to face the fact that uh, jobs, you, you, can, you can't just keep inventing jobs, right? Rather, we should really start to think on how can society persist and live without 
basically by by having automation liberating humans to do more human things you know so people usually do this kind of jobs that automation can now do they do it because they want a salary so if we do something like um, uh, a universal basic income then we will be able to simply uh, take out the workforce and still give a good quality of life to everyone. Uh, what kind of education do we need today to be able to work tomorrow? Um, just be curious. <laughs> That's just curiosity uh, and uh, you know, question things, uh, are more artistic. So basically, the question, can I rephrase the question, is like what it is to be human, right? So, and if you ask everybody when a kid when you're a kid, like, okay, maybe I want to do an artist, maybe you want to do, you want to write books, you want to do this kind of thing. So hopefully with a universal basic income, people will be able to actually do that and perform very well at doing this and, and have a career in a more human-like uh, field of uh, endeavor. All right, and uh, we are about to finish. Uh, okay, this is interesting. Uh, what kind of new jobs? Uh, AI will perhaps create and what kind of it will eliminate. It's a prediction and uh, <laughs> you can just <laughs> imagine, but <laughs> I'm curious, what do you think? So all the mundane jobs can be automated. Obviously, it's always great to have human content, right? You want to deal with humans uh, at uh, all points, but anything which you, the human would be just behind that you don't see, then maybe that can be automated. Um, in terms of what jobs it would create, it's really the question is like, do we need jobs or do we need uh, time off, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, like, I think that um, there will be a lot of uh, research uh, going on. Uh, hardware manufacturer right now is, is uh, um, you know, it's, it's part of that evolution. There will always be more that we can do. So. AI research obviously is going to be um, uh, a very good uh, place to be, but in practice, uh, I think that the jobs that are being the jobs of the future is the creation of the Internet of Things. So where people are focusing on creating sensors, installing sensors, uh, and uh, gathering all of this data crunching this data and come up with decision making and not only at you know your office or your building we're talking about like once we have information at the global scale what is the best way to optimize this information so that everybody gets what they need right so internet of things is the next the next and probably the last big thing that we're going to build very good um, uh, what is your company's most interesting projects if you are able to tell about those. So, right now with some students of mine, we've been uh, working on a project we call Human in, Humans in Context. And uh, the idea is that we now have algorithms that are able to detect our body pose and our direction of interest. That's what we develop. So, the context part is missing. So, basically, once we know, okay, you're walking there, but there where? What's there? So now, uh, in this project, we're scanning the 3D environments around the person. And so that once you have that, you can localize where all the cameras are within that environment and then use the position of the person that you can extract from the viewers of this camera and then understand it in the 3D world where it is that you're looking. As a matter of fact, if you have the direction and you have the 3D model, you can just simply synthesize the, an image that is basically fr taken from the perspective of the subject so you know exactly what the subject is looking at right and uh, you're going to be able to control the environment in this way just look at the light and say off uh, look at the CTV and say volume up right so we will have like really say aware environments that can uh, and we can sh that we can shape using our body and our intention and our commands Fascinating. Um, summarize your message about AI to the world. Oh, summarize my message about AI. Uh, the machines are coming. Um, let's make sure they're good. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Oh, well, you're welcome. <laughs>